day. I'm glad you're here to join us. Love the excitement, the enthusiasm. We need that as uh, not only are we in the house of the Lord, not only is the midweek service, not only are we going to pray together, study God's word, but we've got vacation Bible school coming up. We've got some awesome things. And today's missionary spotlight comes to us. Anybody want to guess? Who wants to guess? Where? Philippines? Nope, that was last week. Where do you think? Papua New Guinea? Nope. You said Brazil? Nope. Uh, it's coming to us from South Africa. All right. We have got an update from Nathan uh, and Kristen Childs. So I will read. It's just an email here, but it's a good email. It says, Dear Praying Friends, I mentioned in our last prayer letter that I would let you know for which day my surgery would be scheduled. We saw the doctor today and scheduled for Wednesday morning next week. I am to be at the hospital at 6 a.m., um, uh, midnight Eastern Standard Time, and there are uh, certainly possible complications, but we are trusting the hand of the Almighty. The Lord brought me through emergency surgery, recovery, and eight chemotherapy treatments. He is the great physician, and we can trust him. My surgeon seems to think that the risks are not great, which is good news. However, that does not mean that I am without concern. The Lord uses Isaiah 41, 10 and 13 to help me during the first leg of this journey. What a comfort it has been to rely on those words. And it's fear thou not, for I am the, with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not. I will help thee. It says, we know that he is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think. Thank you again for all your continued prayers. So again, we know that uh, the cancer is in remission. Uh, this is a surgery. If I believe he has a, a colostomy bag, this is the reversal. Uh, I had one of those, and I had the reversal. Uh, there are some complications that can come with it, but there's a number of tests that are done beforehand to ensure everything's going to be okay. Um, but uh, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for him right now uh, for, their, for his surgery next week, and uh, just put it in the Lord's hands. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, we have the technology to where we can be notified of these things before they even take place, and that we can pray beforehand. But Lord, we know that your word says that you already know what we have need of before we even ask. So Lord, we're coming to you today as We've prayed through with, along with Brother Childs, uh, his cancer journey, his treatment, his chemotherapy. And Lord, now that it's in remission, time for the reversal and whatever procedures he may have. So Lord, I just pray that there would be no complications, that this would be a routine procedure, that it would go exactly according to plan, that he would heal, uh, he would do all the things necessary to be a, have a full recovery, and that he will continue to move forward serving you. So have your hand upon him, have your hand upon the surgeon, guide him, uh, and all those that are involved, I'm thinking about the anesthesiologists, the anesthetists, and all the uh, people that are uh, working alongside, the nurses, and just everyone, Lord, just help everything be orchestrated to your honor and to your glory. And Lord, take care of Kristen as she waits in the uh, waiting room. Just have your hand of comfort upon her, knowing that you're in control. And Lord, just uh, continue to have your, wrap your arms around her. And Lord, we look forward to rejoicing uh, to hear about these, this wonderful news. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's go forward. Let's get into. Oh, well, I, let's skip that one. I'm going in back reverse here. So we are. We did. There we go. June. All right. Soul winning Sunday coming up this Sunday. Please pray. Uh, I have the invitations for VBS for Vacation Bible School. Lord willing, they'll be here Friday. I'd like them to be here sooner just for, for my own satisfaction, but that's okay. As long as they're here before Sunday, uh, we'll have a number of flyers to hand out. Uh, they got the, all the information on the front and on the back. There's the plan of salvation. Uh, so it's a wonderful opportunity to take those out amongst the community. And the thing with Vacation Bible School invitations is that uh, there, there's an expiration date, right? So we want to give them all out. That's what we want to do Sunday. Do our follow-up visits. Go out and do our thing. But at the same time, um, make sure that we give those invitations out because after Vacation Bible School, they are no good. So let's uh, come together. We'll do what we can uh, to go and share the gospel, but also invite a number of students out to Vacation Bible School. And uh, we will look forward to what the Lord is going to do. So come on out. And if you cannot come out, would you please pray? Pray for our efforts as we go. 
and pray for the opportunities that we come across as we see people each and every day. All right, and there's what it is. That's what's going to be on the front of the invitation. Is It's not a mystery. Bible Discovery Days Vacation Bible School starts next week, Monday, 6 p.m., I'm looking forward to that. Be done around 8.30. So uh, I didn't put an end time on there because I wasn't sure, but my wife brought up a good point. Well, how are the parents going to know when to come pick them up? And I thought, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. They should probably be here to come get the kids. So 6 to about 8.30. Uh, looking forward to that. We're getting the big bounce house. So we're going to need all hands on deck Sunday night, uh, Sunday night after the service. It's a 1,500-pound slide that we're going to be getting out of brother mitchell's trailer we got to unroll it we got to pull it we got to do all those things but it will be worth our efforts uh, we're going to have the big slide so if we can get as many people as we can here sunday night to help get that set up and get ready uh, the decorations will be in place plus there's also a sign up sheet on the back table for any way that we you can be involved in vacation bible school coming up on monday all right, and then the 30th, what a wonderful day. We're going to have Ben and Lauren Childs and their family, missionaries to Papua New Guinea with us Sunday morning. Then afterwards, we're going to have a fellowship meal uh, after the service where we'll spend some time with them, uh, just fellowshipping with them, encouraging them as they continue on their endeavors as they're uh, here on furlough. But when they go back, it's only going to be those three in the middle. It'll be Ben, Lauren, and Chloe as they get ready to go back to New Guinea, but they're not going to be in Garoka. Uh, they're going to be in a more urbanized area, and they're going to begin their efforts all over as missionaries do. So let's give them a nice uh, warm welcome, and let's just let them know we love them, we're praying for them, and let's encourage them on their way. All right, uh, we're going to do something a little bit different here tonight because tonight's going to be a special time of prayer for Vacation Bible School. Uh, so um, what I'll have you do, if you have a prayer request that you really want to fill out, there, just fill them out on the back table a little bit later. Get them to me. I'll make sure they get in the prayer bulletin. Uh, but right now, we'll just, we will go to the Lord in song here. And then after we sing a couple of songs, uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer over Vacation Bible School. And then we'll dismiss the children, and then we'll have our Bible study. All right, so let's begin. Let's stand together as we open our hymnals to our first song. Let me grab mine here. Um, it is, uh, let's do this. It's number 626. This one's for you children and for all of us. Uh, Jesus Loves Me, number 626.
Praise the Lord. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to have his hand upon our time together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you do love us, that you bled and died for us so that we can live for you. So Lord, help us tonight as we sing your praises, as we come to you as a body of believers in prayer. Lord, I just pray that uh, you hear us as you promised to, but Lord, that uh, we would honor and glorify you. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing as we turn to our next song, uh, number 601, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. give all our best to the Lord whatsoever you do and whether you eat or drink do all to the glory of God but in the end so long as we're leaning on the everlasting arms you may be seated uh, we're going to sing our final song here in just a moment um, but before we do that start thinking about we're going to have our time of prayer after we sing uh, we're going to have the children stay in here as we pray over vacation bible school and we'll pray about that and as we have our time of prayer how that's going to go is I'll start us off in prayer and uh, we'll just turn it over to the Holy Spirit. We're not going to, we don't have to go around or anything like that. Uh, but a couple of things as we pray. One, anyone's welcome to pray. You're welcome to pray. There's no prerequisite uh, uh, and other than, you know, being born again believer to pray unto the Lord. Uh, if you're going to pray salvation, if you're not saved, by all means do that. We can help you with that. But pray unto the Lord. Anyone can pray. Keep it short. You don't have to get it all done in one shot. Uh, you can pray, and if something else comes up, the good news is you can pray again. You're welcome to do that. Uh, that way, because uh, what happens is if we start praying and just go on and on and on, eventually everybody's mind starts to wander. We have short attention spans when we pray. So if we keep it short and we think, you know what, I'm going to come back to it, go ahead, let some other people pray short, and then you can do it again. You can pray again. And then once it seems as though uh, the moment is, is complete, I will then close us in prayer, and then we will dismiss the Young Ones to Patch Club, and we will get into our Bible study tonight. All right, so let's turn to our final song here. That'll be number 255, Praise Him, Praise Him.
We'll open our Bibles to Psalm 127. Psalm 127. We're going to be in uh, probably uh, four different places tonight, but we're going to start in Psalm 127, verse 3. Psalm 127, verse 3. As we look tonight at Jesus Loves the Little Children, and uh, just kind of get our hearts prepared as we get ready for Vacation Bible School, and realize that this is something that is near and dear to the heart of our Savior Jesus, and that is ministering to children. That's what Vacation Bible School is about. There's fun, there's games, there's activities, there's prizes, there's snacks, there's punch, there's all those types, different types of things, but all those pale in comparison to what is really going on with Vacation Bible School, and that is the preaching of the Word of God and the Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's very important to Jesus, and obviously I know with the people that we have in here, it's important to each and every one of us as well. And it's encouraging that it's almost, this is a message tonight that we're, I believe we're in agreement with when it comes to children, to ministering unto them. So let this uh, just be a, an edification and an encouragement to let us know that we're on the right path and really get us excited for Vacation Bible School. So Psalm 127, verse 3 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Let's pray and we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you. We thank you that you have given us uh, children here in this church. I loved it this past Sunday when we dismissed for junior church and, and Brother Bill said, it looks like half the church left the auditorium. That's okay, Lord, because we have an abundance of children. But Lord, we seek more. Uh, just for the cause of Christ. And Lord, that's the way that you really impact the community and change a generation is by reaching them with the gospel. So Lord, help us, encourage our hearts, help us to get enthused and just ready to serve you. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's begin. Uh, uh, point number one, when it comes to Jesus loves the children, children are a blessing from God. Now I know this one is used and it really does speak to parents understanding that children are an heritage of the Lord. Uh, our children are not given, they are lent to us. You've heard my testimony to where for a long time, uh, I said, God, you can have anything you want from me, but you can't have my kids. And God says, they're not yours, they're mine. And I said, oh, God, you're right. And that was something I had to overcome. Uh, but again, it's, it, that's a blessing and that's not a, that's not a burden. And we see here their inheritance from the Lord and the fruit of the womb is what? Is his reward. And it says here that as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Uh, uh, you know, arrows are not meant to be collected or kept. They're meant to be shot out. And I know as a parent, that is the desire, but that also should be the desire of the church when it comes to our children, raising them up. Uh, First Baptist Church of Bridgeport just recently had their commissioning service for our missionary friends, Austin and Dee Dee Cowling. What a wonderful, I saw the pictures on their Facebook page, and, and they really made an event out of it. And, and praise the Lord that they did. Uh, you know, Austin was one, grew up going to church there. Dee Dee was kind of in and out as they, she was going back and forth from Cambodia where she lived. But at the same time, you know, raising up the children within the church to, to heed the call of God's call on their life, whether it be missionary, whether it be ministry, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, just it can be anything, whatever God calls them to. But the church should have a part of saying, yes, we are here to help you go forth. Now, a lot of times we would say, no, we're going to raise them in the church. They're going to stay here and, and they're going to grow up in the church. And you know what? That's the case for some. That definitely is. I would love to see that here at Harvest Baptist Church. Uh, you know, I'd love to see Uriah be the church maintenance guy with as much as he gets into stuff, right? I said, that kid's going to be a maintenance man and he's going to be that here, right? So, uh, you know, you never know. That's why, I, you know, go ahead, tear it up, you know, figure it out. Anyways, no, I'm just saying, maybe that's the case. Maybe it's not. You know, I'd love to see something like that. But, you know, I'd love to have a commissioning service of one of the people that grew up here in the church saying they're getting ready to surrender the call to the mission field. Or maybe they're called like we had with Jonathan uh, and Sydney, a commission to be an assistant pastor at a church in West Virginia. Just having a part of that and understanding that we're not here to corral, but we're here to, to go forth. And whatever that means, whether it's within the church, whether it's without the church, whether it's on the mission field or wherever God calls them, having that arrow or that quiver full of those arrows, and we see that. Uh, children are a blessing from God. And what does it mean that they're a heritage from the Lord as we see in that first verse? Children being a heritage from the Lord means they are a gift. 
It's a gift to have the children here at Harvest Baptist Church. You know, it's a gift that he has allowed us to have the opportunity to minister unto them. They are also entrusted to parents. That's the first and foremost responsibility. But the church has a role as well. I don't know how many biographies I've read of people that were used tremendously uh, by the Lord. And a lot of their testimonies go to an encouraging time from a Sunday school teacher right? Or maybe it was uh, somebody uh, that was an older person within the church that encouraged them as a child. Somebody that shared Bible verses with them or whatever it may be. They took the opportunity with that child and ministered unto them and, and God used that to grow that child into something that he would use for his honor and his glory. And as we do that, we can look at ourselves to ask ourselves, how can we see children as a blessing in our daily lives by recognizing their potential? by recognizing their unique qualities, right? You know, I, I, was, I was being serious about that when, when, you know, saying that about Uriah. We see those things in those children, uh, you know, just those gifts and those qualities, and you never know. You know, a kid that can, can really scream out from the nursery, right, might be singing out with good pipes up here one day to the Lord. You know, you never know how God's going to use that. But just appreciating the joy and fresh perspective they bring here in the house of the Lord. I love it uh, when little ones love to come into church. You know, it, it would break my heart. You know, I understand sometimes they get uncomfortable and maybe they're tired and don't want to be here, but I would hate for a child to be terrified to come into the house of the Lord. And I love the joy and the excitement and the happiness as our little ones get together and, and they're just scurrying around and doing their thing right here in God's house. Children are a blessing from God. Number two, Jesus welcomes children. Open your Bibles to, go to your Bibles to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, go all the way down to verse 13. This is interesting. As we look at this, we see that Jesus uses this as an opportunity to teach. Matthew chapter 19, verse 13, the Bible says, Then there were brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And what? The disciples rebuked them. You know, I could see that, the disciples saying, What are you guys doing here? Get out of here. Jesus has what? Important work to do. And Jesus saw that. And look what he does, continuing on in verse 14. But Jesus says, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. We see that uh, Jesus welcomed them. He says, suffer. That word suffer there means allow. It says, no, no, no. He says, let them come to me. He says, don't forbid them to come unto Jesus. Uh, you know, he says, let them come. And he laid his hands on them. And Jesus, why would, they, would Jesus' disciples try to prevent the children from coming to him? They might have thought Jesus was too busy. They might have thought he was too important to be bothered by children. Children are not a bother. You know, many times you might have seen the, the kids sitting in my office there with me. You know, and, and my mindset behind that is this, is I don't want, the, if the children are not afraid to come to pastor's office when they're children, they're not going to be afraid to come to pastor's office when they're teenagers. They're not going to be afraid to come to pastor's office when they're adults. And they need some true scriptural guidance. You know, there's a method to my madness when it comes to that. You know, but I could say, what are you kids doing in here? Getting in my stuff. Don't touch my things. Oh, I'm busy here. I've got something important to do. I've got a, a sermon to get prepared for. I've got a, a service to get ready for. But who am I serving? Everyone, even down to the littlest ones, to the children. We must be ready for that and understand that we're ministering unto them, having that welcoming spirit. And that's not just for me as the pastor, that's to all of us, having that opportunity to do that. And Jesus' reaction, it teaches us this. It teaches us that he values children highly and sees them as integral to the kingdom of heaven. He welcomes them with open arms, emphasizing their importance. You know, what does Jesus tell us when it comes to salvation? That we should have faith as what? The highest scholar? No. We should have faith as what? Uh, uh, the most committed missionary? No, we should have faith as a little child, right? That's the faith we're to have, and that's what he commands us to do. And the reason he does that is because the next one is because of the humility of children. Turn back a little bit, if you have to, to Matthew chapter 18. Look at verse number 1. At the same time, the disciples came unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. 
and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children. There it is. You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. One thing I like about children is, is children, when it comes to, to their faith, just the way that they are able to absorb and believe things and take things by faith. You know, a child always has to look up. So should we always have to look up to our Heavenly Father. You know, a lot of times we allow the affairs of this world to taint our faith and to skew our perspective on things, but not that of a child. You know, many children in this church, and we, we tell them that the miracles that Jesus can do, and they believe it. They believe it, and we too should take the, the miracles that Jesus does and take them and believe them. You know, having the faith, you know, the children are listening as we have this time of prayer, as we prayed uh, for many to be able to be here at Vacation Bible School. And, and when God answers that prayer, there will be children that will see that and say, yes, we prayed for that. And it's true, just like the Bible says. That's important. And that comes with having a humble spirit. You know, we see that the characteristics that uh, Jesus loves in children is their humility. They're humble. You know, they're humble. You know, I always say that a lot of times about uh, children is you see the full gamut of emotions of children in church. Imagine if we adults went through that. We come in uh, laughing and, and talking and then we, the next thing you know, the next minute we're crying and bawling and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And, and then the next moment we're happy again and maybe we're angry for a minute, but they, they go through all the entire gamut of emotions. They're not trying to hold anything back. They're humble. They just, they, they are who they are. You know, not trying to be anything that they're not. They're humble, they're innocent, and there's a sense of dependence when it comes to children, just as we should have that dependence upon God. Children are trusting and open, and those are qualities that are essential for true faith and reliance on God. That's why they're tender. You know, you've got to be careful with that. You've got to handle that delicately, as only the Spirit can guide and direct. And we see that, uh, you know, children are humble, and, and again, they are just ready to receive and believe. And that's a fantastic thing. Next, Jesus warns about leading children astray. Go to the book of Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. All the way down to verse 36. <clears throat> The Bible says, and he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. Go all the way down to verse 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and were cast into the sea. That, you know, that it goes exactly with what we just saw about the being delicate and, and just handling children in a way that is honoring to God. With their innocence, their vulnerability, you know, Jesus is always watching. And we see that there's a, a great penalty or the desire that would be if, if we were to cause one of these little ones, that word offend, cause to stumble. Uh, that word offend, you know, sin against one of these little ones. Look what he says. It'd be better for him that a millstone, a millstone, a big old grinding millstone. He doesn't, he doesn't say, you know, just tie an anchor to his foot and throw him in there. He doesn't say, you know, uh, throw him to the swine. He doesn't say anything. He says, take this heavy gargantuan millstone and, and don't just do the, take it. Just put it around his neck and throw him into the deepest part of the sea. That is what Jesus feels or his opinion is on those that do anything against the little children of the church. You know, it's a sad thing in this day and age where many young, impressionable, vulnerable individuals have been violated such. And, you know, if anything, that should, you know, get us to really realize and understand what we have in regards to children, the way we should guard ourselves against, you know, offending them and handling them preciously uh, as Jesus loves them so much. And the penalty is so great to cause any of them to go astray. 
We must be careful with that. And when he says here, what does it mean to receive a child in his name? It means to welcome and care for children as Jesus would, with love, with respect, with kindness. And it implies recognizing their value and treating them as representatives of Jesus. They're just as much a part of this church as anyone else. You know, and they're, if anything, they're, the, they're, they're a portion of the lifeblood of this body of believers. And because of that, that is why it's a serious responsibility of leading children according to Jesus' uh, words here in Mark chapter 9. Again, he, it understands the gravity and responsibility. That's what it is. It's a responsibility. Leading children astray has severe consequences, indicating the importance of guiding them rightly in their faith and morals. Uh, doing all of that in regards to ministering unto kids. So we see here that uh, children, we must remember, they're a blessing from God. You know, uh, kids are going to make messes. You know, there isn't a time where after a service, uh, sometimes I come up here on Mondays, sometimes I come up here on Thursdays, and every single time I'm going to find a little goldfish cracker crunched up in the carpet, right? You know what? And you know what you do with that? You put up an announcement and you say, these stinking kids not respecting the house. No, you don't do that. You don't do that at all. You just buy a little sweeper. You know, you just go, oh boy. And as you're sweeping that up, you're, you know what I say? Lord, thank you that we have children in this church, right? Thank you that I have this mess to clean up because that means we had, we've had a child within these doors, right? You know, we'll see it. Uh, you know, I see the handprints on the door, right? To some, that's a pet peeve, you know, to, to see those greasy little fingerprints on there. But you know, those are the handprints of life as they walk through the door. We can clean that up. We can clean that up. It's okay. You know, there, there are those that minister within the church that that's what God is using them for, to clean those things up. And you know what? Okay, uh, I'm sick of handprints on there. No more children in church. Sorry, your cleaning ministry is done because this place is so pristine because there is no life in this church, right? Uh, you know, again, having uh, crushed up crackers, having fingerprints on the windows, you know, and uh, having, a, having a stinky diaper in, in my office bathroom. That's okay. That's okay. It means there's somebody here caring for our little ones, right? And, and, and you know what? I pick it up and, whew, that was a good one, right? And go throw it in the garbage and put it outside. Turn on the fan. It's all good. It's okay. It's not going to be there forever. You know, because it would be a sad day uh, to see the cobwebs gather in our nursery, because, again, the day we see the cobwebs gathering in our nursery is, is God telling us, beware. Beware, you're beginning to become a dying church. Now, a full nursery is a sign of life. It's a sign of potential. It's a sign of promise. It's a sign of God entrusting us with the care of the precious ones that he, is, that he loves so much with such a responsibility, but yet such a consequence if we lead them astray. You know, again, you know, sometimes we'll hear it. One of the sweetest things I love to hear is on a Sunday morning, right as I'm ready to bring the word and hearing them shouting out the songs of Jesus as Miss Jennifer leads them in junior church. I love when I'm, uh, you know, now that we're downstairs uh, doing the Pathfinders and hearing the little ones in junior Sunday school and, and hearing the rum-tum-tum of little feet coming in as they come into church and hearing all of that. And, you know, even maybe, as a matter of fact, hearing one crying in the nursery, you have to shut the doors. That's okay. That's okay. I'm glad we had to shut the doors because we have a little one in here that is being cared for, right? Jesus loves the little children. Uh, they're a blessing from God. He welcomes and values children. We should welcome them as well. Now, with that in mind, you know, we're praying for a tremendous number to come here with Vacation Bible School. And now that we understand the value that Jesus places on children, understands the responsibility of the body of believers to do their part in ministering unto these little ones, should God provide and make it rain with little children in here, it's up to all of us to make sure they're all safe and secure. It'll be all hands on deck, keeping an eye out, uh, especially with Salisbury Avenue over there. We had that happen a couple of years ago. We had not 70 children, but we had 70 people in here on the last night of Vacation Bible School. And we actually lost a kid for, I don't care how long, it was, it was like 45 seconds, but it felt like 45 years. You know, as a visitor, as a, as a mom coming in, where is my child? Has anyone seen my daughter? And nobody could find her. By the grace of God, she was over by the bounce houses just on the other side where she couldn't be seen. And by the grace of God, uh, the parent thought it was funny. I didn't. I was terrified. I thought, oh, no, this could be very disastrous. Uh, you know, but you know what? 
the child was found, was in good care, was in good hands. But as we have these children here and as they come in, yeah, there's going to be some that have never been in church before, and they're going to be loud, and they're going to do somersaults in the chairs, and they're not going to understand and do all these things, and, and we're not going to get angry. We'll get and do what we have to do. If we have to excuse them to another room, we'll do that, but we're not going to get angry because they don't know any better. We can't expect them to act like churched people if they've never even been in the doors of a church, and this is their first time having an opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm excited as our church family is going to rally around and gather together as we always do for Vacation Bible School. And we have a tremendous opportunity to, to have and welcome children here to Vacation Bible School. And not only should the children exhibit humility, we should as well. You know, things are going to happen. Messes are going to be made. Uh, things are going to get spilled. Stuff's going to happen. And, and, and you know, uh, it's going to be a little bit crazy at times. But just ride with it. Just say, aren't we glad we have this opportunity, right? Aren't we glad that we have this chance to, to maybe sweat a little bit during vacation Bible school? Because before you know it, it'll all be over. It'll be Thursday. And maybe we'll have a number of children that have come to Christ. Maybe some parents will come to Christ. And you never know what God's going to do through this. But just stay humble and realize that we're all in this together for a wonderful and tremendous purpose because we have a responsibility to guide and direct children rightly. So with that, I would encourage you uh, to, to read these passages maybe as a time of devotion and a time of prayer as we approach Vacation Bible School. And just pray how God would use you. You know, you don't necessarily have to be in the thick of it. We need people on the perimeter. We need people behind the scenes. We've got a lot of helping hands here. And I know we're all going to rise to the occasion. Uh, just find your place. Find your place that, that works for you and just see what God will do. Uh, it's going to be a tremendous time. But with that, let's close with a word of prayer. I'll get you out of here a little bit early tonight. And we'll get ready and gear up for this Sunday for Brother Mitchell. I'm excited for the word that he's going to bring. Uh, but we'll get ready for Vacation Bible School. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time we have together. Lord, I thank you that you give us an opportunity to minister unto children. I thank you for Vacation Bible School and just uh, what you're going to do. But Lord, help us just to see the opportunity we have to minister to these little ones. And Lord, just help us to have the spirit of grace and patience and long-suffering, meekness and